über die Donau fliegen zwei über die Wolken kratzen, über die Autobahn. Fliegen und fliegen übers graue Wasser, es ist nimmer mehr Oh, I don't even know what to call I mean, she's a writer, she's a researcher, she's a poet. Ulrike Dresner is one of the foremost German writers, contemporary German writers. Award-winning author um, and academic. Essayist, poet, translator, a woman of many talents. A writer whose work I got to know through her short stories. A prominent and prolific German writer of poetry, prose, essays. She's, a, she's an author to explore and if my students come with me to explore that, that's really like the point where it gets interesting and fun. <laughs> um, what interests me about her fiction is the way it brings together poetic language and it asks you to think what poetry is actually, what constitutes poetic language, and narrative, um, so plot, stories and characters. And in fact she's written about her desire to fuse those two modes um, of literary writing. And I think that gives rise to a really strange and striking and productive aesthetic, whereby characters um, live out, live through uh, really pertinent, really important kind of issues of the day, which are never sort of arid or abstract feeling, but rather very concrete, very urgent. And I think the sort of drama of her texts um, comes about actually because of these, these ideas that give them their, their charge. And I think that's what's really arresting about her work and notable for me. Pastoral. Zwei schneeweiße Vögel am Ende des Parkplatzes schienen zu balzen, außer der Zeit. Kämpften in ihrem Winterkleid, perfekt gepasst in ihr Leben, dachte als Beute Blechgeruch Herbst. Der Scharren jagt in jeden krallen Fuß, die letzte Nervosität, die Unrast fett. Stammen Vogel, Mensch doch voneinander ab? The way that she plays with words is it's, it's operating on a lot of levels, it's very complicated. When we start doing a class about texts of Ulrike Dresner, um, they start by really being skeptical and um, distant and um, a little fearful, and then we start exploring her. Her latest poetry collection called Subsong, which is extremely enjoyable, also has some really, really lovely poems about language learning, about children's way of being creative poets, as it were, in their own attempts at trying to come to terms with our language. Seit drei Tagen kann sie das Erbe und wie, sagte sie, Paprika nach der Kita, Mamrika. Wir lachten, liefen, riefen, Ros. Fahrradkringer kaufen zur Belohnung, wählte sie statt rosa Riffé eine Braue mit Maus. The thing about um, working on poems for, for um, 20 years, as it has been, is that you keep on changing them. I've just <laughs> 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 um, I just uh, this afternoon thought of something. Um, so this one's called White Horse. White Horse, done in rock, 
the eye constructing what it sees only from afar, the English contre-jour slitting our pupils as we, the surge from a bus, head for the image, the chalk, my fading face. With my nail I hatch, such as fingers can, the long mouth, the nostrils, soft, all conjured up in stone, the rock always muter than you think, the eye in close seeing no lines at all, only this blanched body. Here, nothing more will grow. Here, no one take root, ever. Lines, scratches, while you were here, via. I saw nothing. Into my gradually sliced body, the memory flamed, scratching they are, my skin deep scratching scratches. <laughs> Down in the pub, they're chalking up the debts. This ever open, mazy chalk screeching into the slate, something that I sucked through nostrils in a cantering, long necked rock. No. From where? From possible closeness, <coughs> from layers of it. You know, you get used to it, uh, to it in a way, and I just really enjoyed what happened because, in the end, I felt invigorated and uh, supported. Then, nicely, someone mentioned something in a talk, and someone else took it up and in our discussions as well. So something kind of developed a new shape, and for me, it's it's I, it's, it's the term a polyglot poetics which really kind of became like a tag for what I got and what I take along and it's so important for me just to refer back in my thoughts to it because it makes sense for the poetry, for the essays and for the two new novels I'm, I'm trying to, to develop. enjoyed hearing different people's approaches, different ideas. I really liked how supportive the atmosphere was and I found it very sort of amusing to hear a, a professional translator being like, well, you know, this is this is only my version, this very kind of accepting, honestly, please feel confident to bring, bring your ideas forward um, environment that made me as somebody who didn't feel massively qualified to be there, actually very comfortable to, to share my ideas, so that was really great. I picked up some really great tips from Ian as well. I'm, I met some lovely people. I met people that I met before. I met lots of new people. Um, I just had a really great day altogether. And also just the insights from the author herself, really, really interesting, because you don't often get to obviously discuss an author's work with, with her or, or him. Um, and, and just hearing from very experienced translators who have a, a wealth of knowledge about these about this work just the way they they would approach it and the solutions they come up with you weren't scared to kind of talk about just one word for half an hour at a time and kind of really talk about the power of words breaking it down to that level that sort of microscopic level is one of the most useful things you can do as a translator i think it really helps you to hone your craft you see what translation the art of translation really 
does to a text. It reshapes it, it reinvents it. It's so much more than just doing, you know, the, the Google thing. When you're doing an exam text, your main priority is the, the exam. But when you're working with poetry and literature for its own sake, then you're not quite sure what your priority should be. And trying to establish that can make you, can force you to make some difficult decisions. The literary aspect became so prominent, and that was lovely. And of course, you would have discussions about single words, about because it's never the single words. It's always if you discuss a single word, you always discuss how it links to other words, how you build a phrase, how you build a, um, even two phrases, how you connect, and that is how the atmosphere, how the tone is created. The difference between writing in English and German, and uh, that I feel it, yes indeed, it, and much more than that. Um, basically I think it just involves me as another person. Uh, I start, I feel like shifting, my identity shifts if I'm this kind of English person. And um, I think many people who lived in countries uh, or in contexts where they used one or the other language. I know this. You, you swap. Sometimes you don't even notice that you kind of change the language, but immediately your behavior goes along as well. And I remember when I first had this in the 80s, I found myself telling people who I was, telling something about my, at that time, you know, young life. So the story was short. And uh, when I came back to Germany and met new people, I told they asked me the same question, and you tell them something about your life, and I found that even from the first sentence on, that's you know, I'm Ulrike Dresner, which is kind of quite identical, and then the difference in stories happened. So kind of the English language really went deeply down into my brain, <laughs> and even changed some of my ways of thinking in German. And uh, having been here now for these months makes this process more, more comprehensible to myself. Uh, it, it gives me a stance to look at myself and see what's happening. And just by this becoming more obvious, or me becoming slightly conscious of it at least, um, helps me to develop my writing in these two directions, like for the German, a German vein or path. Um, that the has been developing now a kind of English well, path is probably an exaggeration. It's a very, very small, tiny, uh, tr trundling path uh, through grass. <laughs> Footsteps, really, <laughs> trying to build them up. Flöten und flöten übers graue 